Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm finally ready to film the final tour of our loft conversion and I'm very excited to properly show you around. It's probably gonna be a really long video. I'm gonna talk through all the details, but it's gonna be great. And I'm starting by sitting on our new staircase. It's so fab. Since we've had this kind of new staircase put in, as you can probably see, it's added so much light to the upstairs of our house. It used to be quite a dark, small, hallway but now that we've got the stairs and the skylights which I'll show you in a moment it's just brought so much light to the rest of our house so that part has been absolutely amazing yeah we're really really happy with that so we just try to replicate the banister going all the way up to kind of fit with the banister we already had spindles aren't exactly the same but they're close enough and um, we painted this in farrow and ball off black to match what we already had and I love the contrast with the quite kind of clean white walls. This is Farrow and Ball Wevit, which is a lovely kind of translucent white. So we haven't done anything to the stairs yet, as you can see. I've kind of got used to this like painted messy look. It's weird when you have something for quite a long time, you get a bit used to it, but we will eventually carpet these stairs. We just haven't done it yet because I don't know, we may recarpet the rest of our house and we're not ready to commit yet. So let me take you up the stairs and let's go and have a look at the loft. So as you walk up here, it's so nice and bright. I love this whole area. It's just so bright and white and fresh. And we've got two skylights here. So we've got one up here that opens, although we haven't got like a long stick yet to actually open it, but that would be good when it gets warm. And then we've got one skylight just above the entrance to the room that our builder actually recommended. And I'm so glad we did that because again, it just adds so much light to this area. We've also got these mage.com lights, which I really love because they kind of are special, but also simple at the same time. They kind of remind me of oysters and I'm really, really happy with those. I actually bought one of them off a lovely viewer that didn't want it anymore. So I'm really happy I found that because we needed it in such a short time frame. So the staircase kind of winds up here and then we have these little walls here that kind of makes an entrance into the room. And we have a very clever sliding pocket door. These are really good for space saving. We actually have the space at the moment, but if one day this became a bedroom, the bed would really stick out into the room and there wouldn't be space to open a door into the room. So this just saves so much space. Our builders found some that kind of go with the rest of our house. They're not exactly the same, but they're kind of that period style. Um, and we just got these handles online. So that's just a nice sliding door that just brings you into the room. So when you walk into the room, the first thing you see is this sofa, which I'll talk to you more about in a moment. But let me just talk about the kind of general vibe and theme of the room. It's very calm. It's just my favourite room in the whole house by far. We all love it. We just come and spend so much time up here now. It's a real like multi-purpose room. So it acts as a spare room for when we have people stay over. It's an office space. It's also kind of a gym because we have a peloton in here. And it's also a studio kind of workspace for me. I find it really inspiring and I, I've been really like creative since working in this space. So we had to really think about that and all the different things that we use the room for. I think in terms of colours, I wanted it to be very calm and warm and cosy. And I think I learned a lot from the first renovation we did. When we renovated the house, I'd never done a renovation before and I was completely new to it, but we took everything that we learned from that and put it into the renovation of this loft space. And also I think I'm just more confident now than I was then in terms of like style choices and color choices. I know a bit more what I like. So if I was gonna renovate our house again or like a new house, I'd probably do it more this kind of vibe, but I'm so happy with how it's come out. So I'm just gonna kind of walk around the room and show you all the different details. It's always really hard on camera to show a, a full layout of the room, but we're gonna do our best to show you. So when you come in, the ensuite bathroom's just around the corner on the right. And then if I kind of pan around the room, you can see it from back to front with this little office space around the corner here. So let me show you my little office space. So it's just round this corner and I think quite a few family and friends when I told them I was going to put my desk here were quite sceptical. When we were renovating the space they were like oh it's going to be so dark round that corner but I love it. I think it works so well. What I really like is it's kind of hidden 
So the room can still be a spare room, it can still be a bit of a studio space, and it doesn't feel like it's always like an office. I also think it's actually quite bright around this corner because the light is kind of facing me from the back doors, which I'll show you in a bit. It feels like I'm looking out the window. It just feels cozy and nice. This desk is just from Ikea. It's super simple, kind of a light wood and white. I think eventually one day I'll put some prints on the wall here and just kind of zone the space a little bit. I'm so happy with it. Everyone always asks me about this chair. It's actually from West Elm. I've had it for years. I love it because it's twisty and it hasn't got arms, so it's easy to kind of jump in and out of. Behind my desk, I knew that I would need somewhere to put a printer, one of those really ugly, annoying things that you just need in an office space. So I was trying to think about how I can have that so it's not just like sitting under my desk. So I got our lovely carpenter, Gersie, who I love, to create this like open shelving space. So we've got a printer at the bottom and a little plug socket at the back and then just some open shelves, which I haven't really like styled yet or decided what to use them for, but I can put products there that I'm waiting to review and just like bits and bobs that I need for work. And yeah, I'm really happy having that just like behind my desk space. I think it works really well. So let's walk around the room. And as you can kind of see, this is the front of the house. So you can't change the front of a house when you're doing a loft conversion. The back can be a dormer, which is like a rectangular shape, but the front has to look the same as all the other houses. So that's why we have this like slanted roof. I know it's different in lots of different countries and people, when I was showing loft stuff before, they're like, it's so different in the UK. This is how it works here. So for this slanted part, we put in two V-Lux windows. I almost called them skylights. This is a V-Lux window. So these open. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's quite nice actually. I've never opened those before. <laughs> Okay, so that's how they open. And we also added some blinds here, which are perfect if we have guests stay. They're blackout blinds. We just ordered those online. So two of those, and we did them kind of horizontal like this so we could maximize storage space here. I know some people for their loft conversions have like really long vertical windows, but that for me felt like a bit of a waste of space because I wanted to have these amazing cupboards across the whole length of this side of the room and I, I'm so happy with how these have come out. I knew I wanted to do vertical tongue and groove, which is this kind of like indentation, just because I thought that that would kind of add a bit of height and make them look slightly taller because they are, look, if you, I'm 5'7", so they're like a little bit shorter than me. I love the colour. This is Farrow and Ball French Grey, which is not grey at all. It's like a lovely sage green. Green is a very calming colour, so I knew that this would be good for an office space and I knew that it would go nice with kind of the warmer tones that I wanted for the rest of the room. These handles actually are from Plank, which I think my sister recommended, and they're antiqued brass, I think, which went with the light fixtures, and there's a few kind of brass, like antiqued brass um, details around the room. Really happy with those, actually. I, I almost went for black, and I'm glad I didn't. So let me show you what's in this cupboard space so you can kind of get an idea. So this first one, we have not organised inside at all. Apologies for the mess. In here are just some shelves. This is kind of where I put a lot of my work stuff, so like camera equipment, filming stuff, things like that. Over here in this one, more shelves. This is where we keep like spare bedding for when we have people stay. We have our like Peloton, shoes, workout stuff, things I need to sell on Depop if I ever get around to doing it, pillows. And then for this last one, I actually asked to put a rail in there because I thought this would be good for like out of season coats. So I've got kind of spring rain coats in there now. And then when I need to move my winter coats from downstairs, because we haven't got much storage for coats, I can just pop them in here. This actually could also be good if we have guests staying. It could use it as a bit of a wardrobe. Okay, let me show you the most exciting part of this room, this center cupboard, which you'd probably think is just gonna be more shelves, but actually it's way better than that. So backstory, usually we keep our Peloton over here on this side of the room, but when we have guests stay or if I'm filming, I don't really want a massive black bike in the background of every shot and in the way of guests when they're staying. So in here, we have the Peloton. I can't believe it fits. This actually wasn't the plan. It was a bit of a fluke that it fits in here. But this part of the wardrobe gives us access to the rest of the storage. So I add in a bit of a cutaway here and I'll show you how we have kept space behind the cupboards 
It's hard to explain, but there's basically no point going further back in the cupboards because of the slanted back. So we've gone as far back as we need. And then behind that, there's still space. This side, it goes really far and it's almost into like a T shape and we keep suitcases down there. On this side, I'm actually gonna make like a cute little den for Grey. She loves coming up here and like playing hide and seek. And then we've also got the eaves. We've just popped some little handles on those doors and they open up and that's kind of the slanted roof part, they're called eaves, and that's where we keep things like Christmas trees or Christmas decorations, things that we don't need access to on a regular basis. I was so worried when we were doing this loft conversion that we were gonna lose all the storage that we had in the loft, but actually we've gained more storage. I don't know how, but it, we have. I think it's just because it's more accessible, the storage, than it was before. I'm so happy with it. I'm so happy the Peloton fits in this funny little cupboard space. It's genius and this is probably my favorite part of the entire room. Okay, let's just come over to this side of the room and I'll talk to you guys a bit more about color. And actually I'm gonna shut this because I think when that's closed, you'll be able to see the colors a little bit better. And this corner kind of shows all the colors from the room. So I mentioned that this is Farrow and Ball French Gray. Love this color. This is Little Green Mid Clay. It took me a while to find this color, but I'm so happy with it. It's kind of like an OT, beigey colour. I wanted something warm but I didn't want something like pinky and it's just it's so lovely. I wish I'd kind of paint the rest of my house this colour. Um, it's really easy to match things with it as long as you're going to that like warm colour palette and we've actually taken it onto the ceiling as well which is a tip. I think I found that online somewhere if you've got quite low ceilings like a loft conversion has better to just take the colour all over so it doesn't you know if we painted the ceiling white it would draw your eye up and then everything would feel a bit kind of like squashy. So we've just kind of put the whole, the colour all over the whole room and it's worked really, really well. We've also got a little radiator here, just quickly worth mentioning. We weren't going to have a radiator because lofts can get quite warm, the heat rises from the rest of your house. But I think in the winter they can also get quite cold. So we just popped a little radiator here and it, it, it works, it works really well. We just got a cheap one and painted it the same colour as the walls. The floor is a uh, laminate wood flooring, which is like the cheapest flooring you can get and it's perfect for a loft conversion. And we didn't actually have that much choice because so many of the colors were sold out, but weirdly, I think we landed on the best choice we could have. And I'm so happy with how it came out. It's kind of like a mid-tone brown. And I think it works really well with the kind of softer colors in the room and like toughens it up a bit, makes it look a bit mid-century. And uh, it's not too stripey, but it's got lots of nice different tones in it. Really, really happy with this flooring, actually. On top of the flooring, we have put this rug, which is from Soho Home. And it's got this gorgeous, like rusty orange color in it which I've kind of got in a few places in this room. Again, like a nice warm color. I love the style of this rug, I'm really happy with it actually. This little poof, is it a poof or like a footstool? But just adds a really lovely texture. This is like a boot clay footstool. I like the, the pattern and the texture. And you know, you can just sit here and put your feet up. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the sofa bed. We wanted a sofa bed that looked good as a sofa, but also was comfortable as a bed, which really should just be the criteria for a sofa bed, but you wouldn't believe how hard that is to find. We used to have a sofa bed that was so uncomfortable when it was a bed. And then also I find a lot of sofa beds, they're so chunky and I just didn't want like a big heavy sofa up here. So I did a lot of research. I was looking into V-sprung mattresses. So sofa beds that have V-sprung mattresses because that's, that's what you want, a proper comfy, like a mattress like you get on a bed. Found this from Swift, it's the Model 4. And there's so many things I love about this. It opens sideways, which means when it's open, it's not filling the whole space of the room, like a normal sofa bed where you kind of pull the bed out. It's got a V-sprung mattress, so it's really comfortable. I haven't slept on it overnight yet. I've tested it out, but I've had a lot of people stay who I know would be honest with me, and they said it's really comfortable. Two people said, separate occasions, that it's more comfortable than their own bed at home. So I'm really, really happy with it. I'll add in a cutaway now of how it opens up. It's really, really easy. I can do it by myself. I don't need two people to do it. There's also a mattress topper stored underneath that you can just pop on top. I've kind of opened and closed the sofa bed about four times now. And yeah, we're so happy with it. The, it's kind of like a linen finish in, I think it's called pumice. I was worried it was a little bit too gray toned, but actually I think it works really well. And I've kind of warmed it up again with these lovely, 
so her home. <laughs> I had these were old, I had these from years ago. So her home, like a mustardy velvet. Love those. Let's quickly talk about lighting. I have three types of lighting in this room and I think that's the ultimate thing. If you are planning out a room, I think three different forms of lighting, two or three, is ideal. So we've got spotlights and actually what we've got are these recessed spotlights. I wish we had these in the rest of our house. Um, I copied my mum and dad who have recently done a renovation and they got these and they're so much softer than the spotlights we have downstairs. So normal spotlights are just kind of flush with the ceiling. These ones are sunken in and it creates this really soft diffused light. They are so much better than normal spotlights. If you are about to do a renovation, get the sunken spotlights. So we've got those, which I don't use all the time, only if I really need to, if I'm working up here at night and it gets really dark. And then the main lights that we use in here are these really gorgeous wall lights from Soho Home. They have this antique brass and then, what's this called again? Is it ribbed? It's not ribbed. Do you remember what this is called? I always forget when something's like fluted. Fluted? Maybe, that sounds fancy. Anyway, I just think this is so nice. Again, it kind of diffuses the light, adds a bit of texture into the room. I'm gonna quickly go put on the light to show you. <gasps> ah, so nice. Look, it creates this like lovely pattern on the wall. I kind of put these here to zone this area as a bed sofa area. Rich was like, they're too close together. I like them. It was hard, it's hard. We kind of put them on the wall before we even had the sofa. Actually, I think it works well. And then I've got this little side lamp here, which is from a considered space. I love this lamp. It actually was living downstairs in my lounge, but it was always meant for the loft. But I am a bit sad that it's not in a lounge anymore. It's just the most gorgeous lampshade ever. Actually, the lamp base is from Pookie. The lampshade is from a considered space. It's got such gorgeous texture, this kind of wavy shape. And then the terracotta trim, ties in nicely with the kind of rust in the rug. Love this so, so much. This side table also used to live in my lounge. We have a plant. I've had this plant for quite a while. I can't believe I've kept this plant alive. It's going to be so hard to show you guys the back windows because of the light and you can't really like film into the light, but I'm gonna try and add a cutaway here of the back windows. We kind of had to go with black aluminium to match the rest of our house as we have black aluminium windows on the first floor and doors on the ground floor. So we knew that we were gonna go for that. Most people, when they do loft conversions, just have a small window. They don't do the full height, floor to ceiling, windows or doors. But I really wanted to do that. I knew that it would add in some really gorgeous light. And I knew that I didn't really need this wall space for a desk or a bed or anything like that anyway. We decided not to go for doors. Some people do doors and like a Juliet balcony but there's really not a very nice view out there. So I knew I wouldn't want to like go step out onto a balcony or sit out there or anything like that. So we just went for windows and like we literally just have two small windows at the top to try and make it as child safe as possible. But there's so much glass and it just brings in such amazing light. Literally as I'm talking now, the sun is like streaming through onto the floor. This room is south facing, so it gets beautiful sunlight, especially in the afternoon, evening. I really, really love the like sun that comes through here. I'm kind of standing in this corner now so I can talk you through it. We've just had to like pull this blind down a little bit so that it's not too bright for filming, but usually this is higher up. But when it comes to curtains and blinds, I actually found this company, pret a -Vive. Um, They've got a showroom in Islington from my friend Emma Rose Style, who's on Instagram. That really helped me get an idea of what I wanted. So I knew that I wanted to have a voile. This is a voile, it's in this shade called Oyster. And I knew I wanted this for during the day when it's really sunny and I just need to be able to control or diffuse the light if I'm filming. I can literally just like pull this all the way across. And oh, I love this, what's this called again? I can't remember. It's not when it's like all bunched together, it's more like a wave. I think that looks really, really nice. So this is just a really nice like sheer voile. And then behind this, we've got a blackout blind. So this is more for when guests are staying and they obviously need it to be dark. Um, so I really like the balance of a blind and a voile. It's everything that I need for this space. And then let's talk about this because you're all probably thinking, what is that box behind you? This is our one and only true error mistake on the renovation. There's always bound to be one regret when you do a renovation. I was heavily pregnant, literally giving birth when this renovation ended. So this was something that was kind of overlooked. I don't know if aircon is controversial for the internet. Probably is. Uh, we were, I'm in an R in weather to get aircon. I, my bedroom actually used to be in a loft conversion at my parents' house. So I know firsthand how unbearably hot a loft conversion can get in the summer. 
even though we don't have long summers, it's so, so hot. Um, fans just don't cut it. And because this is such an important room for me, it's like an office space, I needed it to be somewhere that I didn't dread walking up the stairs and just get that like boom of like heat when you get to the top of the stairs. So we knew we wanted aircon. Rich did some research into an aircon that's slightly more environmentally friendly and one that doesn't need a massive outdoor unit because we are in a terrace house. So this one that he got just has a grill on the outside. But on reflection, it's huge and it's ugly and we probably should have put it on the floor so we could disguise it. But after I had Rudy, I came upstairs and the aircon was just here on the wall um, and it looked awful. So we, we thought, what can we do to kind of disguise it a little bit? So I just got them to build this box unit around it and then this part just kind of goes up that's the aircon unit you can turn it on use it when we need it and when I'm not using it we can just close that and I know it's still a box on the wall but we've painted it in the same color as the wall and you know what it's fine I'm over it I'm over the aircon <laughs> this is exactly what I was talking about every now and again when the sun shines through it just creates this gorgeous, like, the reflection of the aluminium back windows. Oh, I love it so much. Okay, so over in this corner is where we have the ensuite bathroom. We have another sliding pocket door, save space. And people are always saying, what are those black things outside the door? This is underfloor heating for the tiles. We don't use it now, but if this ever becomes a bedroom one day, it would be nice to have that. And then that's just the lights and the, what's it called, a fan. So yeah, come into the bathroom if you can. It's a little bit squishy and I'll show you what's going on in here. Okay, we're in the bathroom. Sorry if it's echoey. This was kind of more one of the trickier parts to plan, I guess. I found it quite hard to visualize what it was gonna be like, but the floor tiles are from Capietra. Actually, the shower tiles are also from Capietra. Yeah, it took me a while to figure out what tiles I wanted, but I really love the black and white tiles on the floor. I love the contrast. The wall color is the same as the cupboard, so it kind of ties in the room with the bathroom. It's the Farable French gray. Looks really nice, I think, with the black window. And then to finish off the tiles behind the sink, we've just put on a bit of birchwood ply which I wouldn't do if this is our main bathroom because obviously you can get like water stains and stuff. We have sealed it, but this is just a guest bathroom. It doesn't get used that often. So you can be a bit more like less considered with those sort of decisions. I really love the shower tiles and the tiles behind the, the sink because they're this really gorgeous like texture. They're not flat. Um, so it creates a texture, even though we've just gone for white grout, so they kind of blend in. Every tile is a slightly different tone. I think there's four different tones in the set. And I just, I love them. I think it works really, really nicely. The white goods in here, so the toilet, the sink cabinet, the kind of shower stuff, all those things we got from a place called Chris Stevens, which is like a trade place. So they're pretty affordable. Just a really simple glass shower screen. I also got them, oh, I'm very echoey in here. I got them to do a little um, recess here to keep products in. I always think those are really nice in a bathroom. It means you, doesn't, you don't have to have one of those like corner shelves or anything like that. We went for a shower tray to save costs. I think it looks quite nice. But basically guys, let me know if you want a more in-depth video of the bathroom, because I can do that. I feel like there's a lot to say about it. Oh, one more thing to mention. We went for nickel when it comes to the taps and shower and things like that. We have matte black in the rest of our house. I don't love kind of like silver stuff, matte black is terrible with lime scale. I don't think this would be great with lime scale either, to be honest, that's just like a London issue. But I like the way it looks. It's kind of like a dark gray. I don't think there's anything else to say about the bathroom. You could probably see Georgia in the mirror there. Um, I love this mirror. This is Zara home. Again, I liked the fact that I could be a bit more, I don't need storage in here because it's a guest bathroom, so I could just have like a fancy mirror. But we do have a bit of storage actually in this sink. We've got like two drawers here, so we can keep some toilet paper, and a bath mat. Ooh, one more thing about the bathroom, I thought with the greens and the whites, it'd be really nice to have a bit of like wood tone in here. So I got this nice ladder from Zara Home to put the towels on, which I think is really nice. It's not too bulky. I also got this bin. Sorry to be excited about a bin. This is from Zara Home. How nice is this for a bin? Love this. Okay, and then if we're continuing to pan around the room, this mirror, I love this mirror. This was, too expensive. I kind of was having a mad moment when I was pregnant. It is secure to the wall because it's so heavy, but it was really hard for me to find a mirror 
that was tall enough. I do a lot of like outfit photos and stuff, obviously, for work. So I wanted one that was like taller than me, um, but it also had to be quite narrow to fit this space. It took me ages to find one, but this is perfect. I love that it's like leaning. I love the curve at the top. The kind of antiqued brass goes with the wall lights and the handles all ties in very nicely and yeah i'm really happy with the mirror and like what's in the reflection of the mirror georgia just said i think you've said everything <laughs> i think i have said everything sorry if this video was very long but there's just so many details i will put as much as i can in the description box down below. I'm just so chuffed with how this room has come out. Like I said, I love spending time up here. Me, Rich, the kids often just come up and like hang out up here. It's just my favorite part of the house. And yeah, I really hope you guys like it. Please let me know, please leave me a comment and thanks for living through the whole loft renovation with me. I hope it's been fun. Finally, I've given you the final tour. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.